All right, perfect. All right, so today you will use scientific notation to express very large and very small quantities. Then you will use this knowledge in real world applications and simulations. What does that mean? That means that basically today you are going to learn how to do scientific notation. Scientific notation, like I said, make sure you have your pencils, is a compact way of writing numbers that are very large, very small. To know scientific notation, you must first know the parts. So what are the parts of scientific notation? There's four. One, two, three, four parts. The most important part, in my opinion, is this first one right here. This is known as the coefficient. And a coefficient can be a whole number. It can also be a decimal. There are some very important rules that you must never forget regarding your coefficient because they apply for this entire lesson, they apply for the next lesson, they apply through the entire year. When you have a coefficient, in scientific notation, it must always, 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 the coefficient must always be greater than or equal to one, and the coefficient must be less than 10. That is. Not the wrong paper. How do you know? I don't know. All right, hold on, I'll get you the right paper. I don't know how. Only oh, you, you. You didn't grab from there, did you grab from over here? Yeah. Only you. Did you grab from when you walked in? You grabbed that, that's for the other class, so don't worry. All right. So the coefficient must always be greater than or equal to 1, and it must be less than 10. How can you tell? First rule, make sure that you never have a 0 to the left of the decimal point. Let me write three coefficients up here. You tell me which one of them is good and which ones are not good. There's a coefficient. There's a coefficient. There's a coefficient. Which two of these coefficients are no good? Can we not use? Um, <coughs> Sydney. Which, which, what's the first coefficient here that's no good that we can never use? 0 0.3. 0 0.3. Okay, why 0 0.3? Because it's less than 1. Because it's less than 1. It cannot be less than 1. It must be equal to or greater than 1. So we can't use that. Good. I'll give you a second. And Juanji? Oh, man. 13.4. Um, 13.4. 13 why 13.4? Because it's greater than 10. Oh, because it's greater than 10. It's like greater than 10. You can never have a coefficient in proper scientific notation that is greater than 10. So we can't use that either. This is a good coefficient because it is greater than or equal to 1, yes, and it is less than 10. Always make sure that when you're writing your final answer in scientific notation, you check your coefficient. If your coefficient is wrong, I'm going to show you today how we can fix it. Next, obviously, you know what this is. This is a multiplication sign. And then going back to the last lesson, what is this called? Don't tell me it's the number 10. It's, it's got a name. It starts with a B. It's known as the base. That's the base. And in scientific notation, the base is always going to be 10. You're never going to have a base of 9 or 4 or 3. Your base, this is your base, is always going to be 10. Abby, what is that called? What's it called? This is the base. This little number up here is known as a... Stop whispering here. Come on, let her hear. I know, come on, it's in there. She's on the spot, she's like, oh, no. No, I don't know what it is. You know what it is. As soon as we say it, you're going to know what it is. It's an exponent. There you go. That's the exponent. And the exponent can be positive or negative. And we're going to get into later on what that means to us when we see a positive exponent or a negative exponent. If it is positive, right now you just need to know that your number, when written in standard form, will be greater than 1. If you have a negative exponent in scientific notation, when you write your number in standard form, that number will be less than 1. As we proceed through the lesson today, you're going to see how all of the little things that you see here line up together and make sense. Does everyone have this written? Yes. These are the parts of scientific notation. It's very important you know the vocab here, because I'm not going to say what's the <coughs> I'm going to say what is your coefficient. I'm going to say what is your exponent. You must know the vocab. All right. First things first, what we're going to do is there's four parts to this lesson. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a number, and this is standard form, by the way. That's standard form. It's the way you've been writing numbers so far, such as 312, 515,000, 6 million. We're going to take a number from standard form, and we're going to slide it into scientific notation. What you have to do here is you have to look at this number. You're going to write it out without commas. Just write out the number. And then I need you to identify if that number 
has a decimal point. Does it have a decimal point, Matthew? Um, I have to say no. Wait, no, it's it's between the it's between a three and a zero. No, that was a comma. Okay, Nick, where's yeah. the decimal point here? After the zero. After the zero. Isn't this number, Matthew, the same as that number? Yes. Yes. So technically, I have an invisible decimal point right there. When we're converting numbers from standard into scientific, if you don't have a decimal, write in your decimal at the end of the number. And that's where we're going to start the problem. Later on, when you see that we have decimals here, you see that we're going to start from the decimal itself. Yes, ma'am. So when it's a whole number like that? When it's a whole just, number, yes. You just put a decimal and with a zero at the end? Well, you don't need the zero. I'm just showing you yeah. that this number is the same as that number. Technically, you could just write that, all right? If you write the zero, it doesn't matter. We need a decimal point because that's going to be our starting point. That's our jump off point. And that what we need to do is we need to turn this number into a good coefficient. Remember I said that coefficients have to be greater than or equal to one, one and they have to be less than ten. ten. So to do this, to turn this number into a good coefficient, what do I have to do with this decimal? Anybody know? Gabriel? Uh, I gotta move it back. Move it I gotta move it. Back. Which way? Which way do I have to move it? To the left. To the left. To the left, just like Beyonce said, everything you own in a box to the left. So we're gonna move the decimal. Am I gonna stop here? No. Oh, what about right there? No. Here, right? Yeah. Yes. No. no. Let's just see. Don't write this. Don't write this. For right now, just stop there. So don't write what I'm about to write. If I were to stop here, do not write what I'm about to write. If I were to stop here, my coefficient would be 143. Isn't that greater than 10? Yeah. So I can't have that. So that ain't gonna work for me, brah. Oh. I gotta keep on going. Do it twice? Can I move it? I can stop there, right? No. no. Where do I gotta go? To one. One. All the way to the one. Yes. yes. Alright, I stop there, I drop my decimal point. And then I'm gonna write out my coefficient. What's my coefficient gonna be? Allison, what's my coefficient gonna be? <coughs> One point four three. You don't need these zeros; they drop off. It's one point four three. Is that a good coefficient? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it is greater than or equal to one. Bam. Less than ten. Bam. Good coefficient. What <laughs> oh am I going to leave it all like that? Am I going to just put no. it up there and walk away? No. Like, no. No. I'm done. No. I quit. No. <laughs> what do I need, Wendy? You put a. Uh, uh, times 10. Uh, okay, times, multiplication sign, then your base, your base is always going to be 10. 10. 10. Oh, and okay. then I need, need one last thing. What do I need, Mr. Alvecchio? <coughs> uh, you need a 3 as the exponent. I need an exponent, but my exponent, I don't think it's going to be 3. I need an exponent, though. I do need an exponent. Mr. Cedric, yeah. please keep your eyes up here. If I need to close the blinds, I will. Okay, bud? Make sure your eyes are up here. All right, Mr. Cedric, help me out then. Yeah, I need an exponent, right? Uh, to yeah. write a scientific notation? No. What do you think my exponent's going to be? Um, one, three, probably? No. Uh, oh. Anybody have an idea of what? Six, we, probably. Oh, oh, oh. What happened? Six. Not going to be six. Five, what do you think, Abby? It's going to be, let's count how many times we move the decimal. One, two, three, That's four, I five. Yeah, I did that. Wrong. Exponent I it. is going to be. I called it wrong. I called it wrong. Yay. My bad. Now, remember that I said, though, that your exponents can be positive or negative. or negative. How am I sure that this exponent's going to be positive? Because the number you started with was positive. Mm, no. Every number that I put in a scientific notation will always be positive. It'll be greater than zero. Here's two ways that you can tell that this is going to be a positive exponent. The first way is you ask yourself, Look at the original number. Which way did I move the decimal point? Left. To the left. If I move the decimal to the left, the exponent, I wrote it here, is positive. If you move your decimal to the left, the exponent is positive. The other way you can tell that your exponent is going to be positive is you look at your original number. Everyone look at the original number? Yes. This, is, this might be the easiest way. This original number, before we turn it into the scientific notation, was it greater than 1? Yes. Yes. yes, obviously. If the number is greater than 1, your exponent is going to be positive. Two different ways. Whatever way works for you. Greater than 1, positive. Move the decimal to the left, positive. We'll deal with negatives later on. Yes, your question? I'm sorry she called me. I didn't give her the ticket, okay? All right, let's try some more examples. Gabriel, what's up? Oh, yeah, you got to give you one too, right? All right. F1D. And Matthew. And me. And 
No, because you were looking, I called on you because you were looking out the window. I don't want to start a trend there where people are like, look out the window, give me a ticket. <laughs> okay. Let's go to. Ha <laughs> ha! Nicole Minot. We want to turn this into scientific notation. So, first, I'm going to write it out, get rid of the comma. Where is my decimal point going to be? Um, but where's it going to be? I need a decimal point. There's no decimal point here. I need one. Where's it going to be? Um, oh, it's going to be at the end. At the end of the number. When you don't have a decimal, it's going to be at the end of the number. So we're going to drop my decimal it's there. It's invisible, but now we're going to put on your glasses that let you see invisible things. <laughs> and now we can see it. So, now I have a decimal. <laughs> Move my decimal. So, which way are you going to move your decimal? To the left. To the left. How many times? One, two. <laughs> one, two. Well, let's see. Don't don't write this yet. Let's just check it. Do not write. Just pay attention. Everyone, eyes up here. Eyes up here. Don't write anything. She's telling me I gotta move it one, two, three, four, five. Don't write this six times. If I move it six times, Nicole, here's what happens. This would be my coefficient. Do not write this. Just pay attention. Zero point. It would be zero point two five six. Two things are wrong here. One, you have a number, you never have a zero to less the decimal, right? You said that. Plus your coefficient <coughs> is that greater than one? This number is greater than 1. No. 0 0.256 is greater than 1? Oh, no. no. It's, is it less than 1? Yes. Yes. So you move the decimal too far. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of all that. OK. So let's start again. We're going to start here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We drop the decimal right there. We write out our coefficient, 2.5675. That last zero falls out. We don't need it. And then, Nicole. You and then, Nicole. You to the right Just Nicole, please. Times 10 to the fifth power. fifth power. And I moved my decimal to the left, so my exponent's going to be positive. positive. And my original number was greater than 1, so my exponent must be positive. positive. Okay? Mr. Cedric, did you have a question? Um, do we, we don't have to solve it yet or not? If you were to solve that, if you were to multiply it out, right, and you were to do 2.5675 times 10 to the fifth, 10 times 10, times 10 is 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. You multiply Five, this by 100,000, guess what you get? Yeah, There's no, it's not a problem to solve. All this is, this isn't a problem. You're simply transferring this number from standard. You're not evaluating. You're turning this from standard into scientific. If you were to turn it from scientific into standard, <laughs> later I'll explain to you how we get there. Once again, you're doing this without the aid of a calculator. I don't think you want to multiply all these things by millions or hundred thousands or you know one to the million power, right? I want to show you an easier way to do it. Mercy, you got a question? Anybody? I haven't had anybody raise their hand yet, so I'm assuming somebody hasn't gone ahead yet. Nobody sees an error here anywhere one, on this. One. Uh, Sydney, where's the error? Um, in, in, in three, one, two, point five, right? Well, what's wrong with it? Um, the comma. The comma. There can't be a comma. There can't be a comma there. There can't be a comma there. Oh, there's an error. Sometimes I point out, like, see, you guys are gonna catch up. You can't have a comma there. It's not three hundred. It's not three thousand, is it? Is that three hundred twelve? Yeah, yeah. You don't write a comma for three hundred twelve, do you? No. No. Okay. Let's go to. I'll give you a chance. Sydney. That happens to be your card. Yeah. That time I just asked you to solve the error. Sydney, we're gonna write out the number three one two point five. This time I can see my decimal, so I'm gonna start from my. Decimal. Decimal. And then, Sydney, which way you got to move it? Um, left. To the left, how many times? Um, two. Two, let's see. Let's see if this works. One, two. We drop the decimal there, we write out our coefficient. 3.125. And you ask yourself, you say, Self, is my coefficient greater than or equal to one? Yeah. Yes. Is it less than 10? Yes. 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 So, Antonio, Madden do I have a good coefficient? <coughs> Less than one, no. But is this number is this number greater than or equal to one? It's bigger than one. So that's good. Is it less than ten? Yeah. So is it a good coefficient? Yes. Yes! Oh. Yes it is! Hut leads! Hut leads! Go! Sydney, oh. back to you, bro. Yeah. Finish it up. We're writing in scientific notation, so I need some other stuff. What do I need? Finish this up. Uh, the multiplication sign. Multiplication sign, good. And then 
base. The base. The exponent. And what's the max going to be? Two. Two. Good job. This, hold on, this little multiplication sign looks a little weird here. Let's get rid of that. And let's write it in again. Why did you just erase base? Because I had the big eraser, I had the big eraser on, so I erased all those numbers. I know where I want to. I like my big eraser. Why can't I just scratch it out like a lot of ticket? Not good. All right. Um, Laura. Why everybody in front of me next to me next You may not want this problem because this one's going to make you think a little bit. Laura, look here. We look here. And we're going to write out our number. It's going to be 6.00001, right? And you need to make sure that you have a good coefficient. So which way are you going to move the decimal? Um, if you move the decimal to the right, one spot that would become 60, that's too big. Which way would you move it? Left. If you move it to the left, that would be 0.6. That's too small. Which way would you move it? No movement. You wouldn't move it because this is already a good coefficient. But, but, okay. but, I have to write it in scientific notation. So I'm going to write my multiplication sign. Don't need any help her out if you already know what I'm going to write. You're going to write your base and then, Laura, for the million dollar price. <laughs> what is just Laura? Your exponent going to be? Zero. Why zero? Because um, it's going to multiply by one. Because anything that's zero power is one. You can't change the number, therefore it's zero. Also, think about this. Did you move the decimal anywhere? No. no. Decimal going to move this way. Decimal going to move this way. Therefore, exponent zero. And that's it. It's <laughs> now the good scientific notation. Location, location sign, call base. Exponent. Bam, 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 bam! bam. <laughs> good. So good! Questions? This guy is so entertaining. Thank you. I'm going to take my song and dance up here. Bum, bum, bum. Dumb cuts, bam, in the bad. Hi, parents. I'm the one teaching your kid every day of the week in math class. Be afraid. Yes, I can hear you. Talia! I didn't rely on it. I didn't rely on it. You should give me that figure. I give you that figure. It's my board. Alright. This is a pretty three. You got three problems. What are we doing? Right? All three. You must show me your work. Alright, so now we're going to be converting numbers into scientific notation. But if you look here, this number is less than, less than one. Plus, when we move the decimal to get a good coefficient, we're not moving to the left, we're going to be moving to the right. right. So, I'm going to stop here. No. Here? No. Here. No. What about here? Yes. yes. And we write out our coefficient, 4.14. 4. Remember, when you're writing in scientific notation, the first thing you have to worry about is getting a good coefficient. To make this into a good coefficient, we have to move the decimal to the right. Plus, my original number was less than 1. That lets me know that after I write my times 10, when I write my exponent, is that going to be negative or positive? Negative. It's going to be negative. negative. Two reasons why it's negative. I had to move my decimal to the right. Also, if I look at my original number here, my original number, was that number greater than 1 or less than 1? Less. less than 1. That lets me know that my exponent is going to be negative. But negative what? What's going to be? Negative what? 4. Negative 4. Good job. Yes, one. What do you so got? when you move the decimal to the right, it's always going to be negative? When you move your decimal to the right, when you're converting from standard to scientific, and you move your decimal to the right, then yes, your exponent will be negative. Yes, Anthony. Can I do the Cards. That way everyone gets a chance. Nick. Oh, no. Nicholas. So. We want to turn this into scientific notation. So we're going to write this out. 0 0.313. Which way do you have to move the decimal? To the right. How many times? One time. One time. You move it one time. Let's see. Is this a good coefficient? Let's see. Yes. 3.13. Is it greater than or equal to 1? Greater. It's greater. 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 Pencil. And you're in. Greater than or equal to 1? Yes. Is it less than 10? Yes. Yes. So it's a good coefficient. I write my times 10. And then Nick, what's that exponent going to be? 1. Is it going to be a positive 1? Let's look at this. 
let's make sure that you understand why. Which way to you move your decimal? To the right. To the right. If I move my decimal to the right, my exponent is going to be negative. negative. Plus, look at the original number. The original number was 0 0.313, right? Is that number greater than 1 or less than 1? Less than 1. Less than 1. If it's less than 1, when you convert that number into scientific notation, your exponent will be negative, okay? It will be negative. Marissa, you got a question? I was going to say something, but then I figured it out. Okay, you better answer your own question. I like it. All right, easy. 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 All right, we're going to write this out. 0.00042. You got to convert this first. We got to make this a good coefficient. So, which way are you move your decimal? To the right. All right, you tell me when to stop. Okay, keep going. More. <laughs> More. More. Okay, right you sure? Right? Okay. Yeah. All right, she's right. So it's 4.2. What comes after that? Times 10. And then what is your exponent going to be? Negative 4. Negative 4. Yeah. Good job. We move the decimal four spots. We move to the right. It's going to be negative 4. Anthony. Anthony, your card got pulled. What do you know? Lucky guy. I know. It's Low key super happy. Like, yes! <laughs> yes, it's me! <laughs> Woo! What are we doing? Ooh. All right, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to write this whole thing again because there's too many zeros. Which way am I moving that decimal? I'm going to move it to the right sometimes. How many times? Ten. One, Ten. two, Ten. count with me. Three, Three four, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine ten. 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 Eleven. You're going to stop right there? 11, oh, yeah, 11. 11, 11 times. And it goes right there. You write it out as a 1. Ask yourself, is that greater than or equal to 1? Equal to yes. yes, it's equal to. So it's a good coefficient. Oh, yeah. Times 10. ten. Anthony. What's your next one? Negative. Negative. 11. He's got it right. He's got it right. Woo! Woo! What are you going to call you? <laughs> so good. What am I going to call you? I don't know. You're on the request line. When I pull your card. Which next would be Mr. Graham. But he has a whiteboard between him and the next question. Questions on this. Questions? Questions? Answers? Questions? Dollars? No? All right. Four, three, two, one. This, okay? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. We're good. We're good. No, not yet. Oh, Not until you actually see it. Oops. Okay. All right. Put your four up. Um, four. All right. Don't oh. ask me for help. <laughs> Wait, can you put in the part oh, where, where the kids are like, I understand everything. The homework is completely different. The like, key part that you need to understand with what we're doing here. When we convert scientific into standard notation, the goal, and please make sure you're paying 100% attention here, the goal is to make the exponent into zero because anything to the zero power is one. one. So we need to turn this exponent into zero. Sebastian, what can I do? Add addition or subtraction. What can I do to five to turn it into zero? No, let's, we're just focusing on this exponent right here. What can I do, addition or subtraction, to turn this positive 5 into 0? I can subtract what? 5. five. Alright, we're going to subtract 5. But there's got to be more to it, right? I can't just subtract 5. I've got to do something. What you need to understand, right in the minus 5, and I'm going to tell you what we have to do. When we subtract 5 from an exponent, we have to do something to the coefficient. And they have what's called an inverse relationship. Anyone know what inverse means? What does it mean? Opposite relationship. So I want you to look at this coefficient. I want you to look at this exponent here. What happened to the exponent? Did it get bigger or smaller? Smaller. It got smaller by <coughs> five. Well, by five. Subtract five, right? It got smaller by five. If the exponent gets smaller, what's the opposite of smaller? Bigger. bigger. If the exponent gets smaller, my coefficient must get bigger. Let me show you exactly how this works. So this got smaller by five. We're going to write out our coefficient, 3.74. Once again, this got smaller, the exponent got smaller, so the coefficient must get bigger. bigger. Sydney, <coughs> how many times do you think I have to move this decimal? Um, what 
Well, where did we take away from five? Oh. Five to the right. Five to the right. Watch what happens here. One, two, three, four, five. What goes in these gaps? Zero. Zero. And this number becomes 374,000. Oh, it's so smart. All you're doing is turning this exponent into zero. And however much you take away from this exponent, that's how many times you're going to be moving the decimal. So here, I subtract the five. <coughs> My exponent got smaller. smaller. My coefficient must get bigger. bigger. The reason I moved to the right is because my original number is 3.74. If I move it to the left, is this getting bigger or smaller? Smaller. smaller. I don't want it to get smaller, I want it to get bigger. bigger. And I move the decimal five times, that matches. All you gotta do, right? It's just that simple. I'm gonna show you some more examples here. Just so to make that? sure you really get it. Sometimes when things are like, they look so easy, you're like, wait, you're trying to trick us. What's going on here? That looks too simple. Yes, Mr. Seven. So we always, we, we always have to do it to like what the exponent is? Like we, we, we yeah, whatever the exponent is, your goal is to turn it into zero. So if I had, let me show you an example here. If I had, let's just show you one. Add one to name, now that you wrote down. Pay attention. Let's say that I had um, 4.32 times 10 to the third. If I want to turn this, one second, if I want to turn this into standard, I go to the exponent. Matthew, what am I doing with the exponent? I'm subtracting by three. I'm subtracting three because I want this to equal zero. 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 If my exponent gets smaller, my coefficient must get bigger. bigger. Inverse relationship. So we're going to write our coefficient 4.32. Now, the reason I move it to the right is because it's going to get bigger. If I were to move this to the left, what's going to happen to it? It's smaller it would become 0 0.00432. We don't want it to get smaller. We want it to get bigger. bigger. I subtracted three, so I'm moving it one, two, three times. What goes in this gap right here? Zero. Zero. And this becomes 4,320. Yes. So you just um, subtract by the uh, exponent from before that. So like, let's say it was um, 10 to the... Uh, so, the tower. Yeah, you'd be subtracting you five. Subtract five. Yeah, oh, if you okay. have 10, the seven, subtract seven. If you have 10 to the eight, subtract eight. But if you have 10 to the negative two, which we're gonna do later on, what do I have to do to make it zero? I have to add what? Two. 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 And as you're gonna see, if my exponent gets bigger, what happens to the coefficient? Smaller. Then it'll get small. We'll finish that up in okay. the last section. Oh. We'll get there, don't worry, that's the last part. Yes? Um, when we get to the whiteboards, when we're done with the whiteboard, you can go. So I don't want to miss you. I don't want to have you miss anything. All right. Let's call some people. This is not a whiteboard problem. This is not a whiteboard problem. No. Kristen, we need to write this in standard form. So we're looking at the exponent. What do I have to do to turn that exponent to zero? I was right. I subtract. One, that's going to give me zero. Okay, so we subtracted one. This got smaller, so this has to get bigger. Just Kristen, which way am I moving the ex uh, decimal? To the right, how many times? One time. And it's gonna become 53.1. Any questions on that one? No. Seems pretty simple, right? Yeah. All right. Um, Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham. All right, Mr. Graham. What do I do to turn that into zeros? I subtract five, all right. Subtract five, that will give me zero. Good. Now. This got smaller, so my coefficient must get bigger. But there's no decimal point here, so this is why it's important you understand the invisible decimal points. Mr. Graham, where's the decimal point going to start? Is it going to go here or here? To the right, right? Because 6 is the same as 6.0, so put your decimal point there. Which way are you moving that decimal point? How many times? Five. Let's see. Let's see if that works. One, two, three, four, five. That got smaller, that's getting bigger. That works, what goes in the gaps? Zeros. 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 One, two, three, four, five zeros. And this becomes 600,000, the amount of money I wish I had in the bank. <laughs> that's probably the money I have in the bank. <laughs> what do you teachers work on? We work on high fives. <laughs> Questions on this? Questions? Good? Yep. Good? Four, three, two, one. Yeah, I'll give you your ticket. And your ticket, you're right here.
Thank you. And bring him. Okay. All right. Okay. When you're done, come on. When you're done, come As soon as you're done, I'll let you go. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow! 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 scientific to standard before we had positive exponents. Now we have negative, negative exponents. Same process, little different maneuver with the decimal. Once again, the goal is to make the exponent into what? Zero. Zero. So we look at the exponent and I say, yo, self, what's up dude? Hey man, what can I do to negative three to turn it into a zero? Marissa, what can I do to negative three to make it zero? Plus three. I add three, okay. Uh, so we're gonna add three, <laughs> negative three plus three equals zero. zero. Good, so that's what I was supposed to do. That's gonna equal zero, that's good. But now, keep this in mind. Marissa, the exponent got bigger. Coefficient, opposite of bigger is smaller. smaller. This must get Wait, smaller. Do me a favor. It's Marissa's turn. Oh, oh Remember, if you have a question, please raise your hand and just wait. So that way, let her finish her turn. You can help me on the next one if I pull your car. Marissa. Yeah. This got bigger. This must get smaller. smaller. Let's write this out. 4.5. Which way you move that decimal, bruh? Oh, to the left. Yeah, How many times? Smaller. Three times. Three times. Let's see. One, two, three. What goes in the gas? Zero. Six. Zero. Good. Zero, zero, this becomes point. Zero, zero, four, five. That's a five, not a mess. I'm gonna cut on my five. That is a five, and that is your answer. Notice that if you have a negative exponent, when you write your number in standard form, it's going to be less than one. Is this number less than one? Yeah. Yes, it's gonna be less than one. Wait. Yes. Isn't it supposed to be those ones? Yes. Isn't it supposed to be three zeros to go one? Two, three. Okay, well, let's, let's answer this question. One. One D. We added three, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this got bigger, this must get smaller. smaller. We start the decimal. Mm -hmm. Which way are you going to move it? To the right. How many times? Three times. Okay, so look, there's one, all right? There's two, and there's three. How many gaps do you have? Two. Two, so how many zeros are you going to write? Two. Two, so how many zeros are we supposed to have? Two, but Two. also the, the, the last one, that's where the decimal goes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's up? Can you actually go next? Okay. Wait, bro. Did I have to record it? Oh, yeah. What's up? Do you have a question? No, I just wanted to go next. Can I do the one after? We'll see. I got to do these cards coming up next. All right. Juanji. Um, I know somebody in card, but I'm worth uh, taking for that. All right, Wanji, um, thank you for the quick All right, okay, what do we do to make this zero? All right, so um, you add one. I add one. Okay. Okay, you so, know. hold on, hold on. You added one, good. That's gonna make this zero. Go through the process, I know you got it, but make sure you go through the process. If this gets bigger, this must get smaller. So let's write it out, 8.651. Which way, hold on, that's gonna look like an eight. Which way are you moving? How many times? One. Drop it and then write it out as, what are you gonna write? Uh, point eight, six, one, five. I mean, six, five. Six, six, five. five. One. Good job. Uh, the next card is actually, unfortunately, Mr. Cedric, the next card belongs to Miss Del Vecchio. Miss Del Vecchio. What am I doing? Um, for the exponent, you have to add three. Okay, so we have to add three. That's gonna give me zero, perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Write out your coefficient, 3.214. And which way are you moving the decimal? Um, to the left. How many times? Three times. Three times. One, two, three. Nicole! Jesus. What goes in the gap, Nicole? Zeros. Zeros, you're like. <laughs> one, two, and we can write this out as point zero zero three two one. That was so simple. Good. 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 Good.
Yeah. Any questions on this? No. The question seems pretty easy. You're just yeah. mad. Yeah. Right. Thank you. You're just mad. I'm mad. Math matters. Math matters. Math All right, four, three, two, one. Last one of the day. When you're done with this one, you erase your whiteboard, put everything back, pack it up, I'll put your homework on the board. Okay. 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 Okay.